It's in English, Anna Nichenko. Hello. We broadcast here to show you a real picture of Russian invasion of Ukraine. Right now joins our program guest Konstantin Grishenko, former foreign minister and ambassador to NATO, US and Russia. Hello, Mr. Grishenko, and thank you that you joined today our program. Hello. How are you? Thanks. Uh, I'd like to say that uh, today's situation is much better than in the first day of the war, but nevertheless, we continue. We continue our fight and really fight, informational fight. Really important now to uh, give explanation, such explanation as you can give and as, as all our guests can give. Now, talking about help of European Union, talking about help of NATO, and uh, showing, uh, watching all this video, for example, in Kyiv region, in Bucha, these pictures really, I don't know, they, they make shocked, they shocked the whole world. Is it possible that NATO will close the sky or make more certain steps to stop this war? I believe that uh, NATO is ready, not NATO, but most certainly the uh, key countries, including uh, those who have... Uh, uh, Soviet-made weapons today are now ready to move ahead with uh, the delivery of such systems to Ukraine. While there is still a uh, lack of desire to engage in possible, probable combat if you close the skies, there is still uh, a growing uh, understanding that to protect the skies from these brazen attacks on civilian infrastructure, which leads to the deaths of uh, thousands uh, of people who are not uh, combatants. And uh, that understanding is now more and more widespread, but we do have problems. We have uh, uh, Prime Minister of uh, Hungary, who is a uh, Putin lover, and uh, that's unfortunate. So the problem uh, and the challenge is how to make sure that one single country will not block the common understanding of the whole community of all European nations who understand that today Ukraine is fighting not only for itself, not only for its territorial integrity and uh, in general its future as a sovereign nation, but it's also fighting for Europe because everyone understands that uh, on Ukraine Putin will not stop. Now, something that was unthinkable before is becoming uh, uh, a really uh, conviction of uh, those who have uh, for a very long time uh, thought that uh, Putin can be stopped by uh, giving him something, give him tacit uh, understanding that uh, Crimea would not be challenged by, uh, by force. That uh, the so-called uh, Ihtamnet, there is nobody from Russia, mantra will be accepted or at least not challenged as such. Now, at least the uh, majority of political pundits understand that, politicians as well, members of parliaments, that uh, you cannot really feed the beast with a, a piece by piece meal he will t this beast will try to swallow everything and if you do not uh, fight him off then you'll be the next meal on his table but does europe really understand that putin won't stop only in ukraine because we can see position as you said uh, of hungary we can see position of for example germany and olaf scholz and macron also france uh, from on the one hand they mm, i mean um, emmanuel macron may uh, we can see that maybe he supports ukraine but on the other hand we don't see really certain steps does europe understand well, we'll see uh, this uh, Wednesday when the EU ambassadors will meet, uh, having mandate from their governments to discuss what additional sanctions will be taken. And I understand that whatever was uh, prepared for that meeting prior to what we have seen in Bucha, in Borodyanka, uh, in uh, the outskirts of uh, Kyiv, now has changed, the dynamics has changed, the abhorrence 
of these criminal uh, mass uh, killings of civilians changes the outlook of uh, major European nations. So we'll see. But uh, the fact of the matter, the uh, government of France, Macron himself, has uh, now stated that he personally in France would be supportive of the embargo of Russian oil and gas to Europe. And uh, now is a good time for that because uh, the weather is becoming warmer and the need for uh, heating is uh, going down substantially. So if it ever to happen in the nearest future, then the right time is now. So there are good chance. Again, Hungary, presumably, judging by the statements coming from Budapest, might uh, not accept uh, these uh, new sanctions uh, related to energy. But they should not at least uh, block the uh, common position of other European nations. Uh, on the other hand, clearly France can do more. We are now being uh, bombarded from the sea, and not only the ports, but also uh, cities deep inside Ukraine. So anti-ship, our uh, short defense weapons that France is an expert in producing would be a welcome help to, uh, to, to, to protect civilians and uh, critical infrastructure. In the end, we will have to rebuild whatever was destroyed and we will have to rely on support of, uh, among other uh, countries, France. So it's better to, to help protect what we have rather than, than help us in rebuilding something that is uh, pretty functional today, but is uh, in the, uh, as a target for Russians today as well. Some days ago, Human Rights uh, right Watch uh, said that they have lots of facts of uh, military crimes, uh, Russian military crimes against uh, Ukraine. What do you think? Is it possible to punish Putin in what kind of court, in what kind of country? Is it real? No, we, there is uh, an international criminal court, which is also based in the Hague, and uh, it takes a long time. But uh, the fact of, uh, that the proceedings might be started and pretty soon will in itself have a major political uh, input into the, first of all, stopping the war, second, uh, uh, making sure that all the responsible will not be able to leave Russia at all. At, and third, uh, if uh, Russia is to uh, return to the family of civilized nations, they will have to address the issue of atrocities committed by their armed forces on the territory of Ukraine. There will be no other way to be back as uh, a country that uh, will be seen as a normal one. Normal, at least to the minimum degree. That's why I believe it's a very important what is now being uh, initiated by Ukraine in uh, international jurisdictions, as it is not only a legal process, but very much so an important political one. Thank you. Thank you that today you joined our program and explained lots of facts. I'll remind our U.S. Konstantin Grishenko, former foreign minister and ambassador to NATO, U.S. and Russia, was with us today. It was you in English, Anna Nichenko. See you.